the knock that heavy. <laughs> Shear it off the animal, you put it in the bag, and you put it in the box. If you live in Florida, Wisconsin, California, wherever, put it in the box, ship it to us, or yep. you bring it to us the way you guys yeah. did it in the vehicle. Yeah. We'll weigh it up, we'll yep. separate the colors the way we did earlier. Each color would be a lot, so you got three colors, it'd be three lots. You bring them over here. This is Navajo Chudo, also. Yeah. You guys so do the skirting? You this skirt is here? our skirting table right oh, here. Nice. Okay. okay, so this is what we're trying to get rid of. Yeah, right. So I'm going to shake it a little, but not too much because I don't want to get you guys dirty. Yeah, don't worry about that. Okay. I've been skirting myself for the last couple of weeks. You see so how all the little ones are falling? I do. So that's what I'll do. I'll shake it hard. No, no I'll, I'll, I'll go through it and then you see everything on the floor. Yep. If it falls on the floor, uh, it stays on the floor. Really? You have no use for it? There's good product that falls on the floor sometimes, okay. but yeah. if I pay attention too much on that, I, I won't get the big job done. I know. I agree. I'll focus on the little stuff. And Tell me about it. And it's so beautiful. You want to anyways. You know, I know. But I'm like, oh, can I just get a little more out of this? Just keep going. Be, <laughs> be strong. So we'll shake it. We'll separate all the shortcuts, the second cuts. You know, they don't get all the shearing done the first time sometimes. Yeah. So you got to go for that second cut. When they go for that second cut, we got to get rid of all that. For the fact that my machines can't deal with this. Is that right? Yeah. The, the length of the staple should be longer than your pinky. Good to know. If it's shorter than your pinky, yeah. I can't make a good quality yarn out. Yeah. So once I, I shake it good and everything, I'll fill up these bins here. Once these bins are full, I'll bring them to this machine. This machine is what we call a greasy picker. <laughs> it picks the, the uh, greasy product. But that one's still on the, on the, yeah. on the, on the pallet. Wow. So we got to open it up. Yeah. And we use this machine right here to do it. And you can see how big the teeth are in yeah. there. Because it's still a raw product. Yep. So we have big, big teeth like my fingers here. And uh, what it does is I'll feed it through the conveyor belt. The pelt will go in between these two pressure rolls. And the pressure roll is going to hold it. And it'll be like this. Let me grab a piece of it. So as it's going through, as it's going through here, it's going to go through the pressure roll. Pressure roll is going to hold it. And then it's going to pick at it. It's going to open it up because if I were trying to, to wash a regular uh, piece of felt like the one on the wall, the edges will get washed good, the top will get washed good, but the inside, right. this yeah. machine goes super fast. Wow. Goes, I don't even know how fast it's going, 50 mile per hour or something. It goes super, super fast. And then there's a chute cool. at the bottom here, so as it's picking it, yep. it throws it into this. It throws it into here. Yes, sir. Oh, nice. So we'll go to the side and you can see the cage that we have in there. <laughs> so if you look in there, you can see the barrel. Oh, yeah. So it fills this yeah, up, and, cool. and you can see how it accumulates here. Come on, yeah. We need to uh, vacuum this before the next job, of sure. course. You could probably <laughs> sell it as some kind of skincare product. Yes, sir. <laughs> I can come into this area here. This is our scouring zone. So this is where we'll be washing all the wool. This is also where I do my dyeing also. You can, you can see all my colors. Yeah. I got my color charts. I got my colors here. This is where I'll mix it up right here. So you dive in four people? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. So again, let's go back to the scouring. So right here, we're doing a real, real small job for some 4-H uh, program in Colorado. Oh, nice. They sent us down some llama and some alpaca. Oh, okay. But they're real small. They're only like two-pound blocks. Oh. So the wash, every single one is a wash. Normally, we do a wash and a double second wash and oh, yeah. rinse. You can see the water here. Yep. Yeah. You just soak it. We just soak it. It's all non-agitating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just sits in the warm waters, and in a sense, we kind of want to melt it off of the fiber. In a sense, it's not too hot, depending on the fiber. This is a super fine fiber, so it has less scales on it compared to a Navajo Judo. Navajo Judo is like a, a cactus. It's yeah. more like this fish with the scales. Yeah. Super invested with it, so it's strong, strong. Yeah. The, the alpaca slides off. So he's pulling this one out. Uh, nice. He's going to let it sit for a minute or two just for the water to kind of drain out. We'll accelerate that process a little by squeezing it like this. Just so you can see, you can see we have our soaps in there. Yep. What kind and of soap do you use? I mean, it's, it's, it's almost the same as a, as a Dawn dish soap. Because uh, right. it's more antibacterial. Right. We're separating grease. 
So we'll use that. So this is an I-beam that's over our head. Don't worry, it won't that. fall. That's awesome. He's going to slide it over, and then he's going to drop it into his first bin. He's going to lower it down. Drop it. <laughs> This will reach over every one of my pots, and then I can bring it to the centrifuge. Exactly. So the centrifuge is just like the big washing machine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You just, you just, you just, just spinning, basically, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And it's same method as a, as a washing machine. You want it all level on all the sides, or else it's gonna bump around and all that good stuff. So he wants to get make a hole in the middle and push everything to the sides. Then he'll put these gloves on because sometimes this water is super hot, but he's using alpaca, so we want it a little warm. We don't want it super hot. And then what he's going to do next is uh, he's going to bring the water hose over here. He's going to rinse it out. He'll turn it on and spin it out. On a beautiful day like today, we like to take advantage of the sun. And we'll bring them out to our racks and we'll let them dry out here. That's fantastic. This is the 4 H jobs. You can see some more over there. Actually, I think there's a few more over there. That looks like Churro over there. So these small ones are the lava and alpaca jobs. Really? So we'll let them sit here. Let them dry up. They dry quick when they're I out bet, here too. Yeah. But if we're if, if there's not enough room, and there's so many jobs, or if it's cold out, too windy, or whatnot, then we come into this room that's right on the side of yard. So these are all just jobs waiting to do to go on forward. They're just sitting here waiting to dry. See, yeah. I got my fan going on here. They look so clean though. So once it leaves here, it's dry. It yeah. should be totally dry and ready for the next round. And the next one would be, we're going to pick it again to open it up for the carding process. Oh, okay. So we'll come this with another picker. This is a clean picker. It picks a clean product. And then you can see where this came from. What's West Chester, box? Massachusetts. Oh, yeah. Good old USA. USA. <laughs> yes, sir. I bet the company's not there anymore. No. Maybe a little remnant oh, of a building or something. Is. Look at that. So the teeth are smaller, yeah. they're closer together, because here we're doing a little more of a, of, a, of a finishing in a sense. The greasy picker, we're picking it raw, almost straight off the animal in a sense. We're trying to open it up, take all the impurities from the pasture that it picks up and everything and open it up. Here, a lot of that is already out. So here, we'll, we'll come to the biscuit here, and then we'll set it to the conveyor belt again. Pressure rolls will grab it, and then the barrel is going to pick at it. And then here we built this box. You know that you see, we built it for about 10 pound increments. So every drop, every bag is going to be roughly about 10 pounds. Uh, so this, so here's where we'll pick it. We'll pick it twice, and then we'll lay it on the floor once we pull it out. You can see the the, the, the moisture marks on the floor. I'll lay it out like a big cloud. You can see it's going to be carded next. And, and depending on the fiber, again, a trudel is like a, a fish. The scales interlock, and they're they're together. We're right here like a merino, or, or again, like a yeah. mohair. It's so, so smooth that we need to help it stick together a little bit. Yeah, I I do. Do. With the cohesionate. Huh? I have uh, this bottle right here. I'll put a, a water-soluble solution in there, and I'll spray it. And then uh, these bags, I, I spray it, I put it in a bag, and then we kneel on it to get all the air out yeah. so that the moisture is distributed evenly. Then we'll bring it over here. So this is my wife here. I love Hi. Hi. Feeding the machine. There's two conveyors. This conveyor here. Yep. And this, that one up there has nails on it. See that uh, one that's moving? That's a doffer comb. It's only going to allow so much to go over the apron at a time. On the other side, there's another doffer comb that's going to kick it off of the apron into a shaker box. So if you follow me this way, I'll show you how it's working. Yeah. So the water conveyor is going this way. Yeah. And right here, the one with the teeth is grabbing it, it's going this way. Yep. And right here, my doffer is only allowing so much to go over. And as it's coming over, this one is kicking the rest of it off of the off of the conveyor box. So look at it right here. Look at that. that is awesome. This is the shaker box. It's yeah. shaking so that it everything gets level. There's my second doffer comb yeah. that will kick it off of the apron. There's my feed box, so as you can see, my first liquor is kicking into the first main. All the liquors and strippers are working on it right there. Look how thick these teeth are. They're kind of big. This is uh, like the greasy picker. So the next one's going to be finer, like the clean picker. Feed box. Here goes my doffer right there. Oh, yeah. So just kicking everything off, bringing it down. There's an eye right here. That big eye. There's a reflector on the other side. So when the, the bull goes so low and the eye can see itself, yeah. it tells the brain to, to hit the dolphin. 
So then it comes through and it stops me to itself. Yeah? I mean, that is, that is basically. And remember, our card is the board seat. So as it's going, yeah. you can see this one's going slow. All of them are going slow, picking at it. I got three more nickers here. These yeah. three nickers are kicking into my finishing main. See how my finishing main's going yeah. faster? And then look at the look at that. like a hand car. I do. This one not as much, this one more. Because like the cackleberries, the yeah, corals and everything, they get all stuck in between here, so yeah. we'll go and pick them out. You have to pick them out. Physically. Yeah, just pick them out. So as everything is going as you see, yep. we're gonna kick it to our doffer cylinder. Okay. And everything gets transferred, believe it or not, right there wow. at 008,000. Wow. So everything's getting transferred to here. If you look on this side, you can see it. Let me move this box. You can see it on the doffer cylinder right here. As it. Yeah, it is really fine. And see, the initial startup, when it's right here, I'll physically push it down to right here. Right. It goes through these pressure rolls, and it, then my elevator system grabs it. It comes over, and then I grab it. I'll put it over here. You can see it coming down there. That's just gorgeous stuff. Feel it. This is Navajo Trudeau with mohair in it from the Navajo Nation itself. Well, I know we have a friend who, Drake, maybe Drake? You know Drake? Uh, he drops his stuff off here. Does he? Yeah, and he's got some, he's growing, he's got some. Actually, he's doing Angora. He's going to mix with them and go Yeah, yeah, yeah. And some mohair too, so. Yeah, I was thinking. Almost all the. That's beautiful stuff. It is. You put the mohair in it, the shine the you got it. Look at it right through here. If you can get the light up here, it's so beautiful. These are all Look party jobs. This is that job she's doing right now. This is, this is the, and then you see how it has the, Dude, that's, that's the mohair. That's, that's the, the mohair. mohair. The darker one, yeah. Yeah, okay. and then I'll blend it more on the pin drafter also. Okay, Okay. so you can see there's not as much brown here. Yeah, but as we dig deeper, we'll find more. Oh, yes, I see. But I'll make it so uniform that you'll never see those shapes. No, it's really okay. so, well, after, after we part it, yeah. So this is the first phase of aligning all the fibers. Yeah. We're getting it. We've already condensed it down into our can. What do you call it? It's called a pin draft. Pin draft. Yeah, I'm using pins to draft. So I'm pulling everything together with these fall apart pins. It's almost like if you're combing your hair in a yeah, sense. Yeah. But what I'm doing is I'm getting the yards per pound. Or, okay. or, or you can say like the grips. How thick is the final product going to be? I got to be able to get the yards per pound right here ready to be able to spin it. But here I'll do math. What I'm trying to figure out here is again how thick it is, the yards per pound. So eventually, see how it's on the table, how thick it is? I'm working with it like that to begin with. Right. And then I need to bring it down finer and finer to, a, to depending on how thick again they want. It. So I'll figure out, like right now I have five piles on each side. So I'm running 10 piles. It's just cool the way you got it set up. Yeah. It just really is. It's really beautiful. Sometimes I bring the tables over here, whatever, whatever it takes to get it done. Absolutely. So here I'm, I'm, I'm finding it, refining yep. it down to get it to the yard per pound. This machine actually just jammed on me. Now are these cones all the same? Yeah. yeah. There's 32 of them. Huh. There's 32 of them on the top and on the bottom. And they all run simultaneously, which is hard. A lot of moving parts. There is. And if you look in here, these spider gears are the ones for the timing on this back here. So if one of these gears, tooth gears is off, I have to take the back part off and, and retime everything so that, because again, they got to run perfect sure. simultaneously. Don't worry about it. So what it would do, it would come through the back, it would go through the faller bars, like the way you see it right here, yeah. and then it would come through the pressure roll, and then it would come into here. I I'd feed it in here, and I'd feed it into another set of pressure rolls, and this is spinning fast, and then it'll come into here, 
Wow. And it'll look like oh, that. Wow. They're all spring loaded so that the, the weight will push it down. That is ingenious. This bottom pad spins slower than the top one. Right. And that's how we're able to get the wind like that. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. So this one needs one more pass and I'll be able to turn it into yarn. Really? Yeah. One more pass. One more pass, you one more time. The machine so always knows it because once I'm almost done, that's when it always wants to break down. <laughs> or, or when it's close to break time. Right on. So yeah. it lets me know. So it lets you know. <laughs> so once it leaves this machine, we're ready to turn it into yarn. We bring it to this machine here. You know, this is the thing you always think of, and it's really not, it's, it's, these things are doing all the work. Yeah. Really? This, this, yeah, and we're drafting it, we're pulling yeah. it. We're still drafting it here though. Uh huh. This would be the last form of drafting that we would do. Okay. I could change my intermediate gear, my A and my B, which manipulates the speed on these three shafts, which will hold it and pull it to get it to the thinness or the thickness that I need it to be. Oh, I see. Okay. So, so this is where you adjust it. This, this is, is where, where okay. the, most of the math comes. Okay. All right. and, and not only math, because math is just a starting point. Yeah. After that, it's how the, how it feels and everything else from the from experience on what it should be looking like. I mean, it's, it's, it's mechanical once you think it through. Yeah. Right? You got to know a process before you can yeah, you mechanical. Can. Well, this all comes from learning by hand first. Yeah. Okay, let's see. What so on That's this side of the machine, yeah. it's set up for 18 spindles. Okay. It's actually set up for more, but I'm missing one of my dots. So I can run 18. So if I'm running 18 on this side, each bobbin would represent one person on a drop spindle. Isn't that neat? So I would wow. be able to do the work of 18, 18 people, people on this side, the same on my other side. What do your grandparents think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be pretty awesome. No. Right, let me turn this on real quick. Okay, again, this is the last form of drafting. So we're drafting here. In here, I have a gearbox that have my constant set up to where I, this is where I do, apply the turns per inch. Okay. So uh, this is set up for a 207.208.77 revolution. Where this one we're at 14.23, two different constants. Yeah, which means I could do run two different gears, two different setups. I could do a nice knitting yarn uh, on this side. This side could do a warp or a But this yarn. whole side is one measure in that whole side. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So let me turn this on. Now both sides will be running. Now we'll come to this side over here. Hopefully this won't give me too much of a problem. Let's see, let me grab one of my gates from right here. So I have different sizes of gates for different thicknesses of yarn. You see I have some really big wide ones. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then I have some that are really thin and small for more of a knitting yarn. And then these are my travelers. Oh, yeah. Depending on how thick it's going to be, right. I can go with thicker, thinner, or really small ones. So again here, we're just drafting at this point until I connect it to my bobbin. So see it right there? Yep. There's Whoa. no twist in it. It's just wow. getting drafted right there. So that's very cool. Because you're lining all the, all the fiber has to be lined up in the same direction. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'll put my traveler on, and then I'll hook it up. These are knee braces, so every one of these, I can stop each one individually. Isn't that cool? Okay, if you look right here where my finger is, you'll actually see them connect. Oh, yes. So wow, now we're making that. one piece of yarn. They're so neat. We're going to have 18 of them, and they're real nice. That, that, that is so amazing. So yeah, again, I'll have a bunch of piles of all the stuff over and make making some yarn. They're broke there, and then I'll just tie it right back up. These are not the right uh, gears for this, for what I'm doing here. This is just to show you. Yeah. Yeah, show I've done a little hand spinning before, and I know this part, where it, break, where it comes apart. Oh, no? <laughs> yeah. Sometimes, I'll run two piles into one. Sure. Or even three. Just the thickness you want. Right? And I've even ran eight piles. Is that right? Why would you do that? But I can't run a thick piece of sniper. So I'll have to run eight real thin ones to yeah, create over that. over. Right? Now there's ways I could tweak my machine, you know, and play with it a sure. little and get what I want. Sure. So here we're making yarn. Here's a single. 
So the, again, this only comes off as a single. If you want to turn it into a two ply, like like you see my example right here. Yeah. This is an in-house one that I make for up front over knitting yards. Nice. This is uh, Lincoln Mom. So I built this thick. one. It's a nice thick one. It's a two ply eight hundred. Two ply eight hundred. Yeah. So there's two of them together. And again, is that a knitting this yard? This is a knitting yard. Yeah, I was going to say, well, most of what we had was knitting yard. We'd had knitting before, company. yeah. Because I think yeah. it was a four or five. I think maybe. Yeah, yeah, it was either four or five, but it was really tightly done. Two so, and three is what I always recommend. Is that right? Yeah. I was taught three yeah. is always what you really want. Okay. And they, they would put two quarters together, and they would say the void right there is too big. Yeah. If you put three quarters together, you don't have a void. Right, exactly. So if you have a little bit right. of off shape uh, uh, wool, it'll level itself out. It so when it comes off this machine, if we want to ply it, we'll have to cone it first because right. the, the plying oh, machine, yeah, right. which would kind of in your area of rope building, and when we get over there, I'll show you probably like that. Uh, we've got to put it on a cone because the plying machine doesn't accept my bobbins. So, so it we'll takes go cone. this way. So you've got to spin it onto a cone. Uh, we'll cone it. Oh. So this is my roto coner. Take a look right here, 1947, nice. Rhode Island, Providence, all those good old Eastern USA. Know, all those East Coast companies, you know. So yeah, I leave this one on here for demonstrations. Oh, okay. So this is uh, from my bobbin, of course. Yeah. So I want to ply this, but my plying machine doesn't accept my big old bobbins. So what I have to do is I'll put it to this machine. You can see it comes up and over through my tensioners, through my arm right here, and then it's going to jump from here to here to give me a wrap like that on my cone. So all it does is it takes from one uh, from one cone, uh, in a sense, to another. And is this machine just for that? Just for this. All it does is So cones. it's a pretty common thing to not have the bobbin fit uh -huh, the cone. Exactly. Why? Is that like uh, Sony Beta and uh, VHS, or what is that? That one I'm not too sure about. <laughs> that is the people who are first me today. We'll have to ask them. Yeah. Yeah, it should be able to get that thing back in. It doesn't, so we put it on a phone. We have to buy another machine. <laughs> there you go. This machine was made before the time. I have another machine identical to this that was made the year New Mexico became a state. So, right? 1912. And I'll show you that one too. So, you have trouble getting parts? Yeah, they're all casted. Yeah. So, you either have to recast it or not. Yeah, we have some local fabricators. If we come this way, we'll say we took everything on and we have cones now, so now we gotta go to the next process. And that is flying. So, on my spinning frame, I put an S twist, which is uh, clock. Right. On here, I'm doing a Z twist, which is counterclockwise. Yeah, that's exactly like rope making. Rope making. Yeah. That's why I said I need you exactly like this one. Like because here we're coming up and over. We're coming through my eye hook, through my gates, mm -hmm. up and over here. And then right here, you can see is where we were getting the, the plying twist. They'll come down and, and on a bobbin. And this will be a finished product looking like. Ooh, nice. In a sense, not totally finished. You still got to put it either on a cone or a skate. So this would be right here. And this will be coming up. Yeah. I have it on um, traveler and come up and over. And then it'll be coming over like that. And then the ring rail will go up and down. So and, down. and here I can do either one, yeah. depending on how thin they are. Do the thicker, do that sometimes. So this is the flying machine. We'll come flying up and down, down the flight together. And we'll come over here. This is my other coach. Oh, nice. I don't use this one as much. I'm having a little hard time uh, with it. Right? Yeah, so it's taking me a little bit to figure it out. Right. It's 1912 technology, but for some reason I'm having a hard time. <laughs> well, that might be the reason. <laughs> <laughs> but it's beautiful. You keep it in good shape. It looks really clean and everything. It, it works good. Yeah. It'll put you, when it's working, it'll give you a, a wrap just like this. And a lot of times the customers want it on a cone for themselves because they'll put it on their little brother. Yeah, I think so. Do it themselves. So will they, will they put it on a cone on this machine or my other one? Or unless they want it on a skein. They want it on a skein, then I bring it to this machine here. This is my skein winder. So I could do seven at a time. Seven, I could doff seven of them at a time. Uh, this is example. I have one here. It's coming up over my eye hook, through my tensioner, through my other eye hook. We have it right here. Then we'll use this counter with the math formula to figure out how many revolutions will give us how many ounces. 
you want a four ounce skein, I gotta figure out how many turns it's gonna take to give you four ounces. Four is common. Four is common, yeah. four and eight ounce. Four. Sometimes we get requests for one pound. Yeah, but if we're doing a real fine one like this, yeah. we'll do it on a two ounce. Okay. Because they don't need that too yeah, much. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, so I mean, what we'll do is we'll find the revolutions. Here we're at a 69 right there. And let's say we wanted a 70. I'll just turn it one more time. I would cut it with my scissors. I don't have candy. I would tie it together like this. Put a little chicken head knot on it. I would cut that about an inch because I want every single one uniform, one inch, every single one. And then I'll skip one, put a cotton tie. Skip one, put a cotton tie. Come back to the beginning, and then I would doff it off. I would uh, remove it from the machine, take the tension off, and then I would slide seven of them off at a time. Nice. I would put it right here. Now this depends on where it's going. Yeah. Am I going to dye it? Right. Am I going to wash it again? Or am I going to put it in a bag and ship it to Canada? Am I going to ship it to Texas, California, wherever the customer's at? Wisconsin? This, this would be the fin this is our finishing area. Shipping and finishing it right here because we'll box it up and actually send it out from here. Now, the fineness of this one, like, again, this is synthetic. It's synthetic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But if you ever it's... have a question on what it is, yeah. put your lighter or find a match and right. burn it. it melts. Exactly. Right. The smell will tell you. Does yeah. yeah. it smell like plastic or does it smell like burnt hair? It's the easiest form to check yeah. out. So, right here again, we're either going to dye it. Wash it, take the sprays out, and yeah. we're gonna ship it away. This would be the final right here. And then we're done. <laughs> that is so Truly awesome. amazing. Thank you so much. No problem, that. no that problem, really, no really, problem. Really, really yeah, thank you. Yeah, our guys You're are great. You're amazing. Enjoy this. I mean, you, you clearly were doing it for a while. I enjoyed what I did. You made me do this. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Yeah.